Welcome to the Cafe Academy Masterclass for CEOs. Brought to you by the Cafe Academy, helping people grow their coffee shop from scratch. It is our pleasure to have you here today to embark on this wonderful journey towards building your coffee shop from the ground up. In this Coffee Shop 101 course, you will learn all about growing a coffee shop business, such as market research, writing a business plan, writing a floor plan, funding your business, and more. Now, before we begin, I would like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Sean Randall, and I am a business consultant here at the Cafe Academy. And what I do is help entrepreneurs build their coffee shop from scratch with zero dollars. I am very fortunate to be here with you guys today, as I will be your instructor throughout the whole course. This course is designed to make you as successful as possible. By the end of this course, the question is not whether or not you will succeed in your coffee business, it will be whether or not you will make $50,000 in profit or a quarter million in profit in one year. For this purpose, the course and everything you learn here, we're mostly going to focus on what's going to make a big difference in your success by growing your coffee shop. My goal for you as the instructor of this course is for you to have more confidence and courage to tackle any challenges that comes your way. By the end of this course, if you need help with growing your coffee shop business, please send us an email at inbox at thecafeacademy.com. Now, let's start building your coffee shop with invaluable information and becoming a better version of yourself. Market Research the first thing you want to do before you start your coffee shop business is to do market research. Now, what's market research and what value does this bring to you as an entrepreneur? Simply put, market research is a process of gathering information about consumers needs and preferences. If done correctly, market research can help you find customers for your business. Now, the goal of market research is to reduce the chances of your business failing and increase your chances of success. This is the most important step as this will determine whether or not you will succeed in growing your coffee shop. Now, when it comes to market research, there are so many aspects you can go about doing this. However, each type of business will conduct market research in a manner that is most effective for their business. Now, this is one of the challenges that many coffee shop entrepreneurs face when they try to start their coffee shop business. The advice and information you'd find on Google search is usually very universal and doesn't apply to your business. There's never a one size fit all. Each business will have its own unique way to get customers to come to their store. Now to grow your coffee shop, we're just going to focus on what's going to be more impactful and that yields the best return for your time and effort. Now, in general, when you start a business, there are six important questions you need to answer in order to get a good sense of your market, such as, is there a desire for your product or service? This will be called demand. How many people would be interested in your offering? This will be called market size. What is the income range and employment rate? This will be called economic indicators. Where do your customers live and where can your business reach? This will be called location. How many similar options are already available to consumers? This will be called market saturation. And what do potential customers pay for these alternatives? This will be called pricing. Now, out of these six questions, we're going to eliminate three of them off the bat. We don't really need to know if there's a demand for coffee. So this is out of the picture. Now, market size, that's only important when it comes to writing a business plan so that you can get an investor to understand how big your market size is so that he or she will have that information and be able to make an informed decision whether or not to invest in your business. We'll learn more about that later in this course. So for the purpose of growing your coffee shop, this is not too important at the moment. So we can cross this out as well. Now for economic indicator, this can be beneficial in order to understand whether your business can thrive in richer regions or poorer regions. So we can cross this out as well. This is more of a common sense case where you know that you usually want to put your coffee shop in places where you can charge $5 for a coffee without any problem. So obviously, if you're going to put your coffee shop in areas where people can't afford to spend $5 for a cup of coffee, your business will most likely struggle. So we already know that your coffee shop needs to be in the place 
where people have the luxury of spending more. So the aim of eliminating these three questions is to allow us to focus on the other three questions that will have more impact on growing your coffee shop. We definitely need to know where your customers live and how they can be reached by your coffee shop. We definitely need to know if there are other coffee shops available to consumers in the area. And we definitely need to know how much we can charge for coffee and other essentials compared to your competitors. Location. So let's dive deep and take a look at where your customers reside and how we can reach them. Now, out of the three questions we selected, this one is actually the most important. Now, here's the thing about location. You may have experienced a situation where a business that you go to happens to be the only one that provides what you need and there are no other alternatives. And because of that, you still decide to go there anyways. Now, this is the kind of situation you want to be in where your potential customers have no other choice and you are the only option available. Now, as unfortunate as this may sound, it will also give you the opportunity to learn and develop as an entrepreneur. Now, the good thing about being in this kind of situation is that you're going to still be profitable as you learn through trial and error at hand as you go, while your potential customers have no other close coffee shops to go to. Now, as a business owner, we wanna make sure that you're always up and running and that you can afford to make mistakes if mistakes happen to appear as you're growing your business. So the most important thing is to ensure that you are either the only coffee shop on that block or at least one of the very few. So let's talk about the process of how to find your customers and make your business easily accessible to them. Now, there is no question about it. To be successful, you need to put your coffee shop in the right place. However, there are three parameters to consider. You're going to want your coffee shop to be one, centrally located and easy to access. Two, highly visible and experiences consistent foot traffic. And three, a space that fits your vision. Now, understanding these three parameters, we can then move on to the next step, which is finding the right location to start your coffee shop. Now, how are we going to find a location to place your coffee shop business? What you need to do is either buy or rent a commercial property. Now, what is a commercial property? Commercial property is essentially real estate that is used for business activities. Now, this is different from residential property, which is essentially for living and residing. Commercial properties are buildings that house businesses, which are designed to generate profits. So you'll see this in shopping malls, for example, where there are multiple businesses, or even a plaza where you'll see a food store here, clothing store there, or maybe a pet shop over there. Now, commercial property is essentially what you're going to need to set up your coffee shop. The cost of buying a commercial property is very high, so we're more than likely to rent one out instead. More about finding a commercial property will be discussed later in this course. Now, we need to figure out which location would be best suited for your coffee shop. Before you open a coffee shop, we must first understand why they're so popular. We can conclude that coffee shops are a great place to socialize. They're also a favorite spot for people looking to spend time reading a book or a magazine or browsing the web while enjoying a drink and a snack. Coffee shops are also a great attraction for casual business meetings or for students to catch up on schoolwork. So bearing this in mind, we can already brainstorm some of the appropriate locations where we can place your coffee shop. Places such as near colleges or universities, libraries, downtown, or places where there's a lot of business activities. So we'd like to look around those areas and look for vacant commercial properties that are close to those locations. If none is available, you would still want to continue searching until you find one. It is important to find a location to house your coffee shop business. Market saturation. Now let's talk about market saturation and find out if there are other coffee shops that are already serving your prospective customers. But first, what is market saturation? Market saturation is a condition that occurs when the amount of a product or service has been fulfilled in a marketplace. Market saturation occurs when demand for a product or service decreases. Your business can still be profitable in a saturated market, but it will be more difficult and you will need to be more innovative, and that can consume more of your time, energy, and resources. Now, here's something you should know personally. Competition is never good for you as a business owner. You don't want to compete. You don't want to have to lower your prices, and you don't want to have to offer more than you need in order to get the same results. And that usually happens when you are competing with others. 
you're going to have to prove your worth more and to do so is going to come at a cost. Competition is only good for consumers because it allows you as a consumer to get the best out of your dollars spent. So in order to eliminate the likelihood of you having to compete with other coffee shop owners, you will also have to take this into account when choosing a location. So let's create a framework that you can use to decide whether or not you can compete. So let's say that you have discovered a vacant commercial property, but there happens to be a coffee shop owner or a Starbucks in the same area. Should you start your coffee shop near that area or should you go elsewhere? Now, here's the issue. You want to place your coffee shop near the center of your potential customer to attract the largest number of customers. But if you, as a coffee shop entrepreneur, decides to open a new locations away from where your competitors are, there are two potential outcomes. One, your coffee shop will fail to capture enough consumers and will eventually be closed down. Or two, your coffee shop will become a success, causing competitive stores to locate nearby. So either way, if you decide to put your business close to your competitors, you'll be competing for the same customers, but at least there are more chances of them coming to your store instead. If you decide to move your business away from your competitors, you also risk the likelihood that you won't attract enough customers, but at least you will have more dominance and will be able to position yourself as the only option. So in this scenario, what really matters is to investigate how much the cost of renting a commercial property will be and to make a decision based on that. If you choose a location that is far away, but the rent is practically next to nothing, even if you get fewer customers than your competitors, you will at least be more profitable in the end. You won't have any competition and the convenient aspect of your accessibility will be the winning factor for the success of your coffee shop. But over time, after seeing your success, you may encounter a competitor looking to start their coffee shop business next to yours. If you choose a location right next to your competitor and the rental price for the commercial property is high, the countervailing factor may be that you will end up with more customers coming to your coffee shop and that will make up for the rental cost. And maybe your competitor may have little or no effect on the financial performance of your coffee shop. Either options will have its benefits and drawbacks. And the decision you make should also include other variables that you will need to look at before you decide whether to compete or not. Let's say, for example, that you decide that you want to put your coffee shop close to your competitors. If we take this approach, we will then need to ask ourselves, how can we stand out? How can we encourage prospective customers to come to your location? One strategy we can do is to create seasonal drinks. This will create novelty and make prospective customers curious to see what you have in your shop. Your competitors may be selling the same coffee and tea all year round, and your potential customers are craving for something new. When crafting seasonal drinks, you want to experiment with spices and new ingredients. This will help you stand out and bring new customers to your coffee shop. So for example, pumpkin spice latte, chocolate mocha, peppermint chocolate mocha, and more. Now let's say you decide to keep your coffee shop away from your competitors. If we decide to take this approach, we'll have to ask ourselves, how can we market our coffee shop? How can we raise awareness in this new area with our newly established coffee shop? There are two strategies that we can do to attract customers to your coffee shop far away from your competitors. One of the strategies we can do is to put your business on Google My Business. Now, this is going to make a big difference and you'll see success relatively quick. Google My Business enables business owners to place their business on Google's map. This will make it easier for your customers to find your business. Have you ever gone to Google's map or Google search engine and type in, for example, places to eat near me, Walmart near me, or a coffee shop near me. Now, this is essentially what Google My Business does. When you place your business on Google's map and your prospective customers type in coffee shop near me, your customers are likely to come to your store. And the best thing about using Google My Business is that it's absolutely free, no fees. If you have a business, Google wants to know that you exist so that it can inform prospective customers that your business is close to them and open to them you will essentially have free marketing. We will cover more about how to set up Google My Business later in this course. And now the other strategy we can do to attract customers is to be active on social media. You're going to want to advertise and brand your coffee shop business in your area. Now, the nice thing about using social media to advertise and brand your coffee shop business is that you don't have to compete with the whole world for the same customer. This means that your advertising costs will not be as high as the person who sells products online or the person whose customer base is primarily online. 
A person who sells products online has to accept the fact that people have so many options as far as where they can order their products online. So they usually have a huge amount of competition all over the world as they have to compete with other people in other countries who are able to sell their products online at a much lower price. They have to deal with competitors on Alibaba, AliExpress, Wish, eBay, Amazon, and many more companies that can offer the same product at a lower cost. For them, their advertising budget will be significantly higher than the local business budget. If you want to grow your coffee shop effectively using social media ads, your cost can be around five cents per click or five cents per 1000 impression. So this means that you can attract avid coffee drinkers to your shop for a price of five cents. We'll also cover more about how to advertise and brand your coffee shop later in this course. Pricing. Now let's talk about pricing and how you should price your coffee. How do you price your coffee and how much should you charge? Pricing could become a tricky encounter. See, the thing about it is you don't want to price your products and coffee to a point where you can't generate profit to further grow your business. At the same time, however, you don't want the price to be so high that it scares customers away. See, the key is you want to sell yourself as a destination rather than just somewhere to grab a cup of coffee. If you sell yourself as a destination, your customer is not only paying for a cup of coffee, but they're also paying for the experience, a getaway, a place where they can lounge around, a place where they can meet new people, make friends, and a place where they can study or hold business meetings. When deciding on how you should price your coffee, you want to put yourself into the role of a consumer. You want to ask yourself, what would make me feel comfortable paying $10 for a cup of coffee? Is it the customer service, the location of the coffee shop, the friendly atmosphere, or the perceived quality of the product and barista? These are the features that validate someone wanting to pay a premium. The great thing about this is that you have absolute control over these variables. As a business owner of your coffee shop, it's important to protect your coffee shop's perception of high quality. If you protect the perception of your business, you will also protect the price. So something simple as an unclean toilet can reduce the amount that your customers are willing to pay for their coffee, and they may also start looking elsewhere. In their minds, they're going to think, if they don't keep the toilet clean, what else don't they clean? When you start your coffee shop, you always want to look around your store and make sure nothing affects the reputation and pricing of your business to justify paying $10 for a coffee. The price of your coffee is dictated by what customers are willing to spend. So depending on where your coffee shop is located, for example, if you decide to put your coffee shop in a higher class area with a reputation for high quality, you can usually charge a little more because they can afford it. And most likely, if you're in a higher class area, the rental costs may also be high. It would therefore be necessary to charge more to compensate for the cost of the rent. Now, if you decide to choose a lower class location, you'd have to be careful about how much you price your coffee also, as a countervailing factor, if you decide to choose a lower class location, the rent may also cost less and you'll be able to lower your prices accordingly while remaining profitable. Now, the decision to start your coffee shop at a higher class or lower class location will depend on several factors such as rental cost and your preferences. Now, what price range should a coffee go for? If you're going to the higher class, the price of your premium coffee should be around $5 to $10. And if you're going to the lower class, the price of your premium coffee should be around three to five dollars. So when you decide your price, it will depend on the location, the quality of your coffee and your competitors. Congratulations, you have completed the market research section of the Coffee Shop 101 course. After learning this material, you should be on your way to performing market research for your coffee shop business in order to have a better chance of making your coffee shop more successful. Now we're going to the next section of the Coffee Shop 101 course called Business Plan. Here you'll learn how to write a successful business plan that will allow you to start financing and grow your coffee shop. Business Plan. The second thing you want to do right after you've done market research is to write a business plan for your coffee shop. Now, what's a business plan and how does it add value to you as an entrepreneur? Simply put, a business plan is essentially a guide. It is a pathway for your company that describes the objectives and details of how you plan to achieve those objectives. Fundamentally, it acts as a roadmap to show you how to go to where you want to go from where you are. At its core, it is a systematic game plan 
which highlights all the strategic and tactical initiatives to complete the journey. Now, one of the valuable assets of having a business plan is that it will help you secure funding. A well-written business plan can help you get credit lines from banks and investors. They will want to read your business plan so that they can learn more about your company's profitability and make informed choices as to whether or not they should invest in your business or how much they might choose to invest. So because of the value of owning a business plan can bring you, we're going to fully address this topic to make sure that you fully understand how to write your own business plan so that you can get investors interested. In the Financial Freedom course, you will also learn where to get loans, how to find investors, and how to get investments. So what's included in a business plan and how do we write one effectively? Generally, the business plan will have all eight of these key elements. Executive summary, company description, market analysis, marketing and sales, organization and management, operating plan, financial plan, appendices and exhibits. Executive summary. So first, let's dive deep and talk more about the executive summary and how do we go about writing one? But first, what's an executive summary and what purpose does it serve? Your executive summary is essentially the cover letter to your business plan. An executive summary is a brief introduction to and summary of your business plan. The goal of an executive summary is to get investors to check your business plan as this will be the first thing they will see before reading more. The better your executive summary, the more likely an investment will be made in your coffee shop business. You want your executive summary to grab a potential investor and inspire them to read on. You want to put the most compelling thing about your company. What investors are interested in is finding out what you're doing that nobody else is. Your executive summary should explain what the problem is, how your company is going to solve it, and what the financial opportunities are. You also want to focus on what really makes you stand out and the advantages you already have. For example, if your coffee shop has new technologies that would add more value to customers or increase productivity at a lower cost, such as a robot that welcomes customers, or a coffee shop maker that can make more coffee without having to hire more baristas. Or if your coffee shop business has already shown real traction and you're earning substantial revenue, you would want to make this the focus of your executive summary. When you create an executive summary, you want to write as you speak as much as possible, but you want to be as clear as you can when you write as you speak. You want to speak in the first person or first person plural, such as using I and we, and let your personality come through. Investors wants to know that they're talking to someone, not someone who sounds like they've copied and pasted a template. Authenticity is what you want in executive summary. You also have to ask for what you want in return. So when you're asking for money, you want to be forthright about how much capital you need. You want them to know how much funding you're going to need to get to your next milestone and what that milestone is. Keep in mind that an executive summary is just a tool, but it's a very important one. The goal of the executive summary is simply to get potential investors to want to know more about your coffee shop business. When writing your executive summary, make sure you keep it short and simple. So let's take a look at an executive summary I've created for my client who is trying to grow his coffee shop business. As we can see here, we have a well-polished executive summary, which reads as follow. Ground Up Cafe will be the hotspot place for coffee enthusiasts. We plan to serve the best quality coffee and snacks in a fashionable, friendly environment. Our convenient location and outstanding customer service should build a consistent, loyal customer base. My partner, Emily, and I, Jason, have several years of experience in the food service industry, including management. Our main products will be high margin gourmet coffee products, such as espressos, cappuccino, latte, and a wide range of snacks, including healthy alternatives. Conveniently placed within easy walking distance of private universities, nursing colleges, and a variety of office buildings, we intend to appeal to students and young professionals by offering plenty of seating space and exceptional customer service, with a trendy atmosphere. In the local area, our competitors consist primarily of fast food vendors, such as McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts. We intend to capture the higher end of the local coffee market by offering gourmet, non-machine made coffee products at a reasonable price. In addition to our excellent atmosphere and outstanding customer service, we plan to target sophisticated coffee consumers. The location we have chosen has 1,800 square feet of space, room for an outdoor table and requires minimal remodeling. 
the location has been unoccupied for several months and the property owner is highly motivated and has offered a five-year lease with a fourth year free. Sales revenue is expected to increase from $150,000 in the first year of operation to $200,000 by the end of the third year. In order to minimize operational cost, my partner Emily and I will be on site on a full-time basis to reduce staff costs, coordinate, and establish quality control. We expect net profits to increase from $40,000 to $80,000 by year three. $150,000 in startup funding is required for rental costs, remodeling, furniture, and equipment. Emily and I have $75,000 in cash and will receive the rest from the loan providers. So as we can see here, this is a good example of how to write an executive summary for your coffee shop. You want your executive summary to be short and straight to the point, nothing fancy. As you can see, what makes this stand out is that the coffee shop is conveniently located within walking distance of private universities, nursing colleges, and offing buildings. So in a nutshell, this is your competitive advantage. The problem is the lack of coffee shops for young professionals in the area, and your goal is to fill that gap with your ground up cafe company. Now, as you can see, what makes this executive summary more compelling is when you use I or we to speak in your own voice. It shows more authenticity and makes the reader more engaged. Then in the end, we clarified our financial situation and how much we need in startup funding to cover rental costs, remodeling, furniture, and equipment. You always want to make sure you ask for what you need. Company description. Now let's talk about company description. What is company description and why is it important when it comes to writing a business plan? Company description provides important information about the business, including where you are located, how large the business is, what you do, and what you plan to achieve. So essentially, you want to give an overview of the coffee industry, the local market, and what makes your business extraordinary. So here's an example of how yours should look like. According to recent U.S. Census data, millennials have reached baby boomers as America's largest living generation. Millennials are more social and mobile than previous generations and prefer to have coffee with friends in fashionable public location, increasing the demand for high-end coffee shops. U.S. statistics indicate that specialty coffees are increasing by 20% per year. Americans consume more than 400 million cups of coffee per day, and retail sales of coffee exceeds $5 billion per year. Our position in the industry. Cherry Hill, an upscale area with a large population of students and young professionals, is an attractive location for coffee shops such as Ground Up Cafe. People in this area can afford to spend money on specialty coffees and snacks and are willing to do so. Our market research has shown that 8 out of 10 people polled in Cherry Hill consumes at least 3 cups of specialty coffee per week. The Competition while there are currently two other coffee shops within the area, they do not offer outside seating or substantial parking. One of them doesn't offer free Wi-Fi. What makes Ground Up Cafe unique? Ground Up Cafe marketing strategy is to attract young professionals with the best quality products, friendly atmosphere, and plenty of indoor and outdoor seatings. We strive to be a place to meet with friends, relax, and have a great cup of coffee. Super fast Wi-Fi will allow students and professionals to communicate easily and work on school or business activities. So as you can see here, the company description is a good follow up to the executive summary. When writing your company description, you want to give an overview of the coffee industry as a preliminary step to let readers know if the coffee industry is growing and why. Then you want to establish the position in which your coffee shop business plays and how you're going to grow your business. Then you want to explain who your potential competitors are, if any, and how you plan to win over customers. Finally, you want to let the reader know what makes you different from the competitors in your area. In this example, the Ground Up Cafe has the finest quality coffee and products, a friendly atmosphere, and plenty of indoor and outdoor seatings. We've established ourselves to be more than just a place to get coffee and more as a place to meet with others and conduct work activities. Market analysis. So let's talk about market analysis. What is market analysis and why is it important when it comes to writing a business plan? 
The goal of the market analysis is to demonstrate that you have analyzed the target customers properly and that there is enough interest in your products to make the coffee shop business profitable. When conducting a market analysis, you can also include a competitive analysis of how your coffee shop business competes on the market. So here's an example of how yours should look like. Our primary target will be students and professionals due to the close proximity to schools and office buildings. The two groups are avid consumers of coffee, tea, and snacks. Based on our consumer research, there is a clear demand in a central location for a high-end coffee shop that serves excellent coffee, which has both outdoor seating and parking facilities. The three most frequent complaints about existing competition in the area are inconsistent quality of coffee. Consumers are hesitant to become frequent customers of a coffee shop that cannot deliver a high quality product consistently. Total absence of outdoor seating. On a sunny day, many people enjoy having their food and drinks outdoors. And no parking facilities. Lack of parking makes it difficult to draw vehicle commuters. The local customer base consists of roughly 4,000 students from private universities, 250 school staff, and 800 professionals and office workers. The private university have a strong presence and its student population is increasing. The local commercial market is booming and has been remarkably unaffected by past economic downturns. In comparison to our competitors, we expect our revenues to grow strongly as we build our customer base. Now, as you can see here, to give our readers more visuals, we've decided to set up a table and list our two competitors, Cupo Joe and Mugs Coffee, and how our ground up cafe coffee shop compares to theirs. There are four aspects we are looking at, particularly regarding estimated annual revenue, employees, price, and quality. Of course, we don't have their exact annual revenue, but we can make a good estimate based on seeing how much traffic they're pulling in and the price they're charging. So as you can see here, we've identified who our target customer is going to be and how we're going to reach them. We also took initiatives by undertaking consumer research to ensure that there is a demand for high-end coffee and also explain the most frequent complaints that consumers have about existing competition in the area and how we are going to resolve it. We also provided a rough estimate of the number of students, school staff, and professionals working in the area. We also created a table to illustrate our estimated annual revenues, employees, prices, and quality compared to our competitors. Remember that the goal of market analysis is to understand the market and to find the best way to beat the competition and reach out to consumers. Marketing and Sales Now let's talk about marketing and sales. After providing an executive summary that briefly explains your business plan, company description that provides important business information, and market analysis that identifies who your target customers will be and how you plan to reach them, you then want to follow up with a marketing and sales strategy. This is one of the most crucial aspects when writing a business plan, as investors will like to know how you're going to get customers to come to your coffee shop. Now, here's an example of how you should write your marketing and sales strategy. Our product offerings. The existing competition used low-grade beans, low-cost machinery, and does not properly train staff, resulting in inconsistent product quality and dissatisfied customers. At Ground Up Cafe, we're passionate about coffee and we're committed to consistently serving the highest quality product by supplying premium beans and snacks, maintaining freshness at all times, using top-tier espresso machines and related equipment, and providing baristas with professional training. By concentrating on quality, consistency, and a high level of customer service, we will build a steady repeat customer base. Strategy for pricing. We plan to focus on specialty coffees such as espresso, cappuccino, mocha, and etc. as the profit margins are much higher than regular coffee. To charge a higher price for regular coffee, we will not use drip machines. Instead, each cup will be served individually with a coffee press so that each cup is fresh and tasty. Our price will be competitive with the higher end of the market. We believe that our customers will be happy to pay top prices for a great cup of coffee. Sales of goods. We will focus on providing counter service in a professionally designed, homely and inviting interior space. Interior seats will be a mixture of smaller individual tables for closeness and longer bench style tables for larger groups. 
Outside seating will consist of weather resistant tables and chairs with sunshade umbrellas available. We intend to be open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekdays and 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekends. In regards to cash and card payments, we will also accept Apple and Samsung Pay for purchases. Advertising and Marketing In order to minimize cost and connect with the demographic of our customers, most of our marketing will be digital. We intend to promote our products vigorously using the following methods. Banners on billboards on the university campus, our top of the line website, and daily specials published on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Statistics shows that rewards program are highly effective and Ground Up Cafe will use a customized rewards program to encourage repeat business. As you can see here, we have properly mentioned that our competitors use low grade beans to make coffee, cheap coffee machines and low quality staff. And we further explain that we will offer premium beans, top tier machines and high quality staffs and how this will bring a steady repeat customer base. We've also shown how we're going to market our coffee products to make the most of the sales profits and multiple payment methods that we're going to be able to accept. Then we follow up with explaining several ways that we're going to advertise the coffee shop to bring customers. And we've also mentioned that we're going to implement a customized rewards program to encourage repeat business. So as you can see, it's important to be as clear and detailed as possible so that your readers can see how the operation is being handled. Right now, after reading up to this point, you can already see how the coffee shop is going to be profitable. And that's exactly what you want. You want your readers to have a full understanding of what's going on inside your coffee shop. You want them to feel confident about investing in your business, knowing that you're taking the coffee shop in the right direction. Your readers need to feel that you've got everything under control. And if any issue arises, you're strong enough to face any challenges. Organization and management. Now let's talk about organization and management. In your business plan, you always want to include a section for organization and management. The goal of this section is to describe the legal structure, ownership, and the company's management and staffing requirements. So we need to let the reader know whether your coffee shop is a C or S corporation, sole proprietor, or an LLC. For your coffee shop, you're going to want to create an LLC, which provides the best legal protection. But first, I would like to briefly explain how each entity works. A business entity simply refers to the form of incorporation of a business. LLC, which stands for limited liability companies and corporations, is a common type of legal entity. When a business is incorporated, the law recognizes a business as a separate legal entity capable of entering into contracts and acquiring properties amongst other rights and privileges. So the reason you want to form an LLC is that if your company is to get involved in any lawsuits, it can only come after the company and not after your personal assets. So let's say you've been running your coffee shop successfully for seven years now, and the money you've made from your coffee shop, you have invested in buying 10 houses so you can rent them out. Let's say an unfortunate customer slips and falls in your coffee shop and has suffered back injuries and decides to sue you for medical expenses. If you have not formed an LLC, the injured customers will be able to sue you for most or all of your assets and you will essentially lose all of your houses. The LLC makes it where if you're going to get sued, at least you don't lose everything. Because let's say you decide to shut down the coffee shop because of the incident. At least you still own all of your assets and can use your property as collateral to relaunch another coffee shop. So the goal is if you were to get screwed, at least you don't get screwed all the way. So here's an example of an organization and management section. Ownership structure. Ground Up Cafe is a limited liability company registered in the state of New Jersey. The company is 100% owned by Jason and Emily. Jason owns 51 Class A share and Emily owns 59 Class A share. Management Structure Owners Jason and Emily will be in charge of the business and at least one will be present at all times during hours of operation. Both owners have previous experience and knowledge of food services and are highly experienced baristas. External Resources and Services 
Inside Illusion Design Service will be contracted to design the interior of their premises. AccuStaff will provide business accounting services for the business, and Kimberly's Catering will supply baked goods. So as you can see here, this is a good example of the organization and management section of your business plan. You want to inform the reader who's going to run your coffee shop company, shareholdings, and you want to highlight the management or owner's talent, experiences, or valuable assets they will bring to your coffee shop. Then you also want to include any external resources and services that will help you grow your coffee shop. Operating plan. Now let's talk about the creation of an operating plan. What is an operating plan and how can having one be beneficial to the success of growing your coffee shop? The operation plan is a very detailed plan that provides a clear view of how your team or department will contribute to the achievements of the objectives of the company. The operational plan lays out the day-to-day -day functions needed to operate and manage your coffee shop. In writing your operation plan, you will need to outline the physical requirements of your business, examples such as retail space, equipment, inventory, labor, and so on. So for your coffee shop, you'll need to include the facility in which your coffee shop resides, the supply chain in which you'll receive premium coffee beans, specialized coffee brewing equipments, and sourcing staff. Here is an example of an operation plan. Location. The location we have chosen is located at One Cherry Hill Mall Drive. The building space has 1,800 square feet of indoor space in a newer, well-maintained building with an ideal location. Roughly 400 square feet of outdoor seating space with locking racks for bicycle. Existing zoning for restaurant usage. A three-year lease of $3,000 per month with a fourth year free. The owner of the building is responsible for the collection, recycling, pest control, and security. Utility bills, including water, electricity, gas, internet, phone, are estimated to be $600 per month. The previous occupant was the owner of a steakhouse, and the kitchen and washing facilities are still in place. The former occupant offered to sell used kitchen appliances at highly discounted prices. Staffing Two full-time and two part-time baristas will be hired on the basis of industry standard pay rates. Emily and I will train the baristas. The two full-time and part-time staff will be drawn from staffing agencies. Owners and employees will share all daily duties, including taking orders from customers, making coffee and tea, clearing tables, restocking, dishwashing, washroom facilities, and more. A bonus sharing system will be developed to increase employee retention. Equipment. The following equipment will be purchased. Commercial grade La Marzocco espresso machine for $10,000 and an espresso grinder for $1,000. Emily and I are currently negotiating the purchase of used commercial equipment from the previous occupant, including glass door refrigerator for $800, dishwasher for $1,200, microwave for $500, and miscellaneous items such as shelving, storage containers, etc. for $400. Maintenance contracts for equipment will be negotiated with suppliers. Supplies. We have entered an agreement with John's Coffee Wholesalers to provide premium gourmet Colombian coffee slash espresso beans with two day shipping. Dairy products, beverages, fruits, and so forth will be sourced from the local Costco. Pastries, muffins, brownies, yogurt, fruit cups, and sandwiches will be served daily by Kimberly's Catering. So as you can see here, this is a good example of the creation of an operating plan section of your business plan. You want your reader to have a good sense of what's going on and why you've chosen the location. You want to be as descriptive as you can while only providing the relevant information. You want the reader to know how you plan to get the employees and who will facilitate the training and other measures that you plan to take to retain your employees. Then you want to have a list of the equipments and the prices to purchase the equipment. Then you want to explain to the reader how you're going to get the supplies to serve your customers. Now, keep in mind that your operating plan may change over time, such as getting another vendor to deliver coffee products or another vendor to deliver catering products. But initially, you want to have a plan 
to show the readers that this is the process we're going to take to make our coffee shop a success. Financial plan. Now, let's talk about the creation of a financial plan. When writing your business plan, you always want to include a section for your financial plan. But let's first understand what a financial plan is and how valuable it can be to attract investors to invest in your coffee shop. A financial plan for your business lets you know where your company stands at the moment and where it is expected to be in the future. The financial plan will give you an idea of how much you need to finance your business. Your financial plan should contain four key statements. Income statements. This summarizes the revenues and expenses of your company. Cash flow projections. This shows your monthly cash revenue and expenditure disbursements. Cash flow projection is your best guess as to how you think cash will flow into your coffee shop business in the future. It is necessary to show that you can handle your cash flow as this increases your credibility when it comes to money management. Balance sheet. This shows the assets and liabilities of your company. The balance sheet is important because it shows the financial position of the company at a specific point of time and allows you to compare what you have achieved in the past and what you want to achieve in the future. Break even analysis. This shows the extent to which your company will be profitable. Providing a break even analysis tells investors how much revenue you need to achieve in order to make a profit. So if you're a startup, you're not going to have a lot of data to show. So what we're going to do here is set an example as if you're already in business for a full year. Here's an example of how your financial plan should look like. As we can see here in this example, we have our income statements. Right below the income statement, we have the company revenue data. So let's look here at the sales revenue. As you can see here, we have a total of six products for sale. We have on record coffee sales, retail sales, dessert sales, food sales, bottled drinks, and bean sales. Now, if we look at coffee sales, we can see that our revenue here is $100,000. For retail sales, it is $5,000. For dessert sales, it is $20,000. For food sales, it is $20,000. For bottled drinks, it is $5,000. And for bean sales, it is $0. If we add all this up together, $150,000 will be our total net sales, leaving $150,000 as our total revenue. So now let's take a look at the expense paid out by the company. Below the expense, we have the cost of goods sold, which is often abbreviated as COGS. Below the cost of goods sold, we have a total of six products that have been purchased. For coffee purchases, there was $25,000 that was spent there was $0 spent on inventory supplies. There was $1,000 spent on retail purchases. There was $5,000 spent on dessert purchases. There was $5,000 spent on food purchases. And there was $1,000 spent on bottled drinks. If we add all this together, $37,000 would be our total cost of goods sold. Now, if we look briefly below, we will see the payroll expenses. Now, if you had employees, you would have to put this as part of your expense as well. But for this example, we will leave everything here at $0. Now, after calculating both the cost of goods sold and the cost of payroll, our total cost is $37,000. So if we subtract $150,000 of revenue minus $37,000 of total expense, our net income is $113,000. This is how much we've made in profit. Now, if we look below, we will see cash flow projections. Here you want to give a reasonable expectation of your company's financial performance. We already have the data to show for 2020 as we have already calculated. Our total cash inflow, which is another way to say revenue, for 2020 is $150,000. And our total cash flow expenditure, which is another way of saying expenses, for 2020 is $37,000. Our net cash flow, which is another way to say profits, for 2020 is $117,000. Now, cash flow projections are usually never 100% accurate, but it provides insights into the capability of how much your company could do that year. Cash flow projections will give you a clearer picture of where your business is headed, and it can show you where you need to make improvements and cut costs. So let's say if you were planning to add a new product line to your coffee shop and you know it's going to do well, 
Then you will want to approximate how much you think it's going to sell based on how well your other products are selling. If your ground up cafe coffee mugs bring you $25,000 in revenue in one year, we can assume that you have customers who like your brand and if we decide to add another product line, perhaps another coffee mug with your brand logo and slogan, we can predict that a new mug will bring you another $25,000 in one year. Now, right below the cash flow projections, we will see the balance sheet. The balance sheet gives a snapshot of your assets and liabilities. So as we look closely, we'll see that the current asset you have are cash and inventory. Both of them total $112,000. Then for property and equipment, we have La Morzoco Espresso Machine and Espresso Grinder, both for $11,000. And if we add all of your total assets, this will amount to $123,000. Looking down below, we can see liabilities. And right below, we can see current liabilities. Under the current liabilities, we have an additional paid-in capital in the amount of $20,000. This is money we received from outside source to fund a company that must be paid back. So our total liabilities are $20,000. So now let's take a look at the break even analysis table. As you can see here, we've calculated how many cups of coffee we're going to have to sell to break even. So if it costs us $25,000 worth of coffee purchase and we sell a cup of coffee for $4 each, we're going to have to sell 6,250 cups of coffee to break even. This is great data to have. And it's also a good piece of information for you to know as the owner so that you can have a goal to reach and surpass. As you can see here, it is very important to give as much detail as possible to your financial plan. It doesn't have to be complex or complicated. Make it simple enough and organize your information. You also want to include only the relevant information. When you start your coffee shop, your financial plan is going to be short as you don't have a lot of data to provide cash flow projections or any liabilities and assets. But as your business begins to grow, you have enough data that you can provide to your readers to see the progress of your coffee shop business. Appendices and Exhibits Now let's talk about adding appendices and exhibits to your business plan. When writing your business plan, you may want to include a section for your appendices and exhibits if necessary. But what are appendices and exhibits? And how are we going to write your own to put in your business plan? First, you want to think of your business plan as a narrative that tells the story, while the appendix is where you put the verifiable data that supports it. The appendix outlines the details that will help to verify and support the strategy you have presented. So when it comes to writing your business plan, keep in mind that a business plan can serve as a number of different functions, each requiring a different set of documents. Your plan can serve as a blueprint for your internal planning purposes. It can be a training and development tool for employees or investors, or it can facilitate a request for financing from a bank. Each of these would demand different documentation, and you may not want to share some of the details with everyone. Creating an appendix allows you to add and remove certain documents depending on who will read your business plan. Some of the things you might want to include in your appendix, if applicable, the business owner's credit history, detailed market research and competition analysis, resumes of the owners and key employees, information on your industry, information on your product slash services, sites, buildings, and office plans, duplicates of mortgage documents, equipment leases, and so forth, or quotes on them, marketing brochures and other materials, links to your company website, copies of patents, permits, or license held by you, contracts for present or future work, spreadsheets, and financial projection documentation. When you compile your supporting documents, the appendix will be the final section of your business plan. So it will look like this, for example. Now, as you can see here, we have a resume example that we will include in your appendix, which will add more credibility to your business plan. As we explore further, we can see that we've highlighted the co-owner's experience, education, and achievements and made sure to include a picture and ways for the reader to contact the co-owner. You may want to include a resume for your appendix, if necessary, in order to strengthen your business plan. Congratulations! You've completed the business plan section of the Coffee Shop 101. After learning this material, you should be on your way to writing a successful business plan 
for your coffee shop business so that you can attract investors and get funding from lenders to grow your coffee shop towards success. Now we're going to head to the next section of the Coffee Shop 101 course called the Floor Plan. Here you will learn how to create a successful floor plan that will increase the value of your coffee shop and attract more customers to your store. Floor Plan The next step you want to follow after writing your business plan is to create a floor plan for your coffee shop. Now, what's a floor plan and how does it add value to your coffee shop? A good floor plan can increase the value of your coffee shop by maximizing space, light, and airflow, while at the same time creating a natural flow between rooms. So the reason for creating a floor plan is to prevent your coffee shop from feeling cluttered, cramped, and uninviting. The potential problem that can arise when you start your coffee shop is that without a floor plan, it can negatively affect customers from coming to your store. No one wants to go to a coffee shop when there's not enough space to dine comfortably. So you want to make sure that your tables and chairs are far away from the register and that there is enough workspace for your staff and your customers. You want to create a welcoming atmosphere for your visitors. Before you create a floor plan, you want to learn about the different zones of your coffee shop and how each one correspond to the other. The goal when designing an ideal coffee shop layout is to help attract more customers to sell more products through efficient merchandising and to create a comfortable environment for customers and staff. Here are eight elements that we need to include when designing your floor plan. Retail location, calculation of commercial rent price per square foot, entrance area, interior space, interior design, lighting, furnishing, coffee bar, and kitchen. Retail location. First, let's learn about your retail location. The location of your coffee shop is going to play a huge role in the floor plan of your shop. Before you start looking for a retail location, you need to be clear about the objectives of your coffee shops. You want to ask yourself the following questions. How many seatings would you like to have? This will affect the square footage criteria of the location. What kind of customer base are you attempting to serve? This will have an impact on the area of the city you need to open. And are you looking to have a drive through option for your customers? You will want to check with your landlord to see if this option exists. So let's answer these questions together. Let's start with how many seats you'd like to have or should have to get the most optimal result. If you want to foster an environment where customers stay for longer periods of time, meet with others, work and have a cup of coffee, you'll need more space. To achieve this, your dining room slash seating area should cover roughly 600 to 750 square feet to accommodate approximately 40 to 50 customers at one time. The total number of square feet that you'll need is around 900 to 1200 square feet if we're going to include additional spaces that you'll need, such as the working space for your staff when brewing coffee, the espresso machines, the refrigerators, and the overall setup. With this amount of space, you can start shopping for furnishings, tables, and chairs for your cafe business. If you're looking for coffee shop interior decoration ideas for your company, type in coffee shop interior ideas on Google search, and you'll see a lot of ideas that you can integrate into your cafe business. The amount of seats you should have depends on the amount of space that your retail location can provide. You want to make sure that you have high quality furniture as this will attract high quality customers and tables that will make it possible for professionals to catch up with their work. The tables and seats should be arranged in such a way as to make it as comfortable as possible for customers to engage with others. Now, what kind of customer base are you attempting to serve? This is very important so that you can determine the price of your products and the kind of expectations they expect from entering your coffee shop. This will also empower you to make a strategy for your approach to certain individuals. There are many types of customers who will enter your coffee shop for the first time and determine whether or not they will become a repeat customer. The first group of people you want to cater to is the freelancers slash artists slash influencers. This group of individuals usually does not work nine to five and they frequently like to hang out at a place where they feel most productive. You want to keep them happy in your coffee shop. It's a good idea to ask them about what they do. Artists and freelancers live off their networks 
and there's a good chance that you might know someone you can recommend to them. The freelancer will remember that you have taken an interest and will most likely become a repeat customer. The second group of people you want to cater to are the first time daters. A coffee shop can be the perfect setting for a first date, which allows for a familiar and quiet place to get to know someone. Sometimes a five star restaurant or an amusement park can be a bit too much when you barely know someone. And that's usually why the atmosphere of a coffee shop can be the first stepping stone. These group of people can be your best coffee shop customers around as they are always at their best behavior, dressed to impress and more likely to spend more money to make that first impression. This is where comfortable seatings and furniture can be effective in this situation. For these group of people, it is best to always leave them alone so that they can focus on each other and enjoy the experience. These group of people, also known as first time daters, are more than likely to become a repeat customer. The third group of people you want to cater to are avid readers. Avid readers are always looking to find a hiding place where they can settle down comfortably and enjoy a good book. These groups of people are adventurous customers who love snacks and are likely to try all kinds of coffee to find out what they like. To increase sales for these group of people, you want to have mouthwatering finger food treats on hand so that they can enjoy snacks while keeping their hands free to turn pages. The fourth group of people you want to cater to are the conversationalist. These groups of people you will encounter will use the local coffee shop as a communal place to sit down and have conversations. The conversationalist customers often retired, usually travel in packs and is always ready for a good conversation. Their discussions usually involve politics, business, sport, pop culture, and more. These group of people are usually the heart of a successful coffee shop as their presence sets the tone of a coffee shop and gradually attracts more and more customers of different types. They add social value to coffee shop owners as they are usually friendly to others and are always looking to start up conversations and bring the community together. When designing your coffee shop floor plan, this is where you want to include having a large table that accommodates large groups while giving privacy to smaller tables such as the freelancers, the avid readers, and the first time daters. The goal here is to understand the type of people you want to attract and cater to so that you can better position your coffee shop and increase your profitability. Understanding the kind of people you want to have in your coffee shop will influence your floor plan. Now, another question to ask yourself is, are you looking to have a drive through option for your customers? Having a drive through option for your coffee shop business can increase your overall profitability by allowing you to maximize your order volume. Before you start searching for a location, you'll need to find out what your drive through coffee stand will sell. There are very few coffee shops that only serve coffee and your menu will determine your location needs. Consider the following questions that you should ask yourself. What kind of customers do I hope to serve? What time of day are they going to buy coffee? Are they going to want coffee with their meals or between meals? What are the other coffee shops offering in my area? This is something that you would like to map out. The products that you include in your menu need to be adapted to that framework. You want to avoid offering full lunch with hot sandwiches and donuts as this may not work at your driving location. You want to avoid trying to offer everything to your customers and only have a few choices of products that they can choose from. Once you are aware as to who your target customer is, you can start developing your menu. Muffins, pastries, and other products that can be baked the day before would be perfect for a breakfast rush. They can pair well with coffee and espresso drinks. Also consider having a large variety of teas, smoothies, Italian sodas, and other non-caffeinated drinks that are great for the afternoon and evening customers. Coffee is your primary offering, but you can acquire new customers by offering non-caffeine drinks. You also want to explore the market in your area and get to know your competitors and find out what kind of coffee shops are in your area. You want to find out if there are any drive through options available, and if so, what do they serve? So for example, if all the drive through shops only serve drinks, then incorporating food to your menu will set you apart. You will also need to consider other alternatives to increase the convenience and accessibility for your customers in order to increase your revenue.
An option you can arrange is to create a mobile order or pickup. Adding a mobile order option to an app like DoorDash and Grubhub can greatly accelerate your business. If your prospective customers get their coffee from your coffee shop twice as fast as anywhere else, they'll become a repeat customers and more likely to become a loyal customer. Another aspect to note when studying your competitors is their peak hours. If you have a well-known coffee shop down the street, you will essentially be taking away part of their business. Learning their peak hours can help you plan for your staffing needs and advertising strategies. Now, if you're looking to add a drive through features to your coffee shop, it's important to find a convenient location that can be easily reached by car. Your location will affect your customer traffic more than anything else. The goal of having a drive through option is for customers to have convenience, and that will be your competitive advantage. As a business owner, you can save a lot of money on startups and operation costs. As for the customers, they want their coffee to be quick and convenient. When you set up a drive through for your coffee shop, a good location for you can be as simple as having empty parking spaces. It is very unlikely that you will be buying an existing coffee driving business, and if one does exist, the leasing price may be high. However, when looking for a place to start your coffee shop, you always want to be on the hunt for leasing opportunities. And if you ever stumble upon a vacant drive through business, you want to gather more information and decide whether this location is affordable for your coffee shop. If you decide to incorporate a drive through feature for your coffee shop, you also have the option of building your drive through stand from scratch. If you build yourself, you'll need access to the right tools and equipment, and you can save a lot of money by building a drive through yourself. If you are unable to do this yourself, you can negotiate with a contractor in your area to help you build a drive through Calculation of commercial rent price per square foot. Now, before you go to a retail location to start your coffee shop, you want to learn how to calculate the commercial rent price per square foot so that you can know if you're getting a good lease term deal and whether you should go for it or not. Commercial rent are calculated on a price per square foot basis. This is because the spaces in the property can be divided or combined. These numbers give business professionals, such as yourself, a concise overview of how to compare rent prices between properties. A commercial rent for $6,000 a month doesn't tell you how big the space is or what's included in the base rent. So let's say, for example, that you will need essentially 1,200 square feet of space to start your coffee shop. And as you're browsing around for commercial rent, you've discovered a property owner who has exactly 1,200 square feet of space that's going for $11 per square foot. If we do 1,200 square foot times $11 per square foot, your total rent cost for the year will be $13,200. And if we divide that by 12 months, the cost of your monthly rent to run your coffee shop would be $1,100 a month. Later in this course, you'll also learn how to find a commercial space for your coffee shop. So now that we understand the calculation of commercial rent, we can start creating a floor plan that will be best optimized for your coffee shop. Remember, the size and dimension of your chosen retail space will greatly affect your floor design. The objective when it comes to choosing the size and dimension is to evaluate the cost versus space. The greater the space, the more room you'll have to include a coffee bar, fireplace, seating in the bistro style, and anything else you can envision. However, if the cost per square foot is too high and you believe that the location is not worth signing the lease agreement, then you want to back away from the deal. Entrance area. In your floor plan, you want to create an entrance area. This is the first impression that customers get from your coffee shop. You want to make your entrance area feel welcoming and provoke curiosity. You want to petite the interest of prospective customers to enter your business. The goal of your entrance area is to make it Instagrammable and interactive. People enjoy immersing themselves in experiences such as going out to eat or going out to a remarkable coffee shop and this in turn will grow your business. Also with the growth of social media, more people are looking forward to sharing their experiences with others through images on platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Designing your coffee shop entrance area with eye-catching attractive features contributes to creating a full-fledged experience for your prospective customers 
while also serving as a free marketing strategy. Interior space. In your floor plan, you want to know how much interior space you're working with. This will depend on what your strategy is. If you want to create an environment where customers stay for extended periods of time, meet with others, work, and have a cup of coffee, as well as additional space such as workspace for your staff when brewing coffee, espresso machines, refrigerators, and the overall setup, you will need approximately 900 to 1200 square feet. When creating space in your coffee shop, you want to keep in mind that you want to have tables for the group of customers who come in large group, furnitures, and small sitting areas for first time daters, and private sitting areas for others who come in to read or do freelance work. Interior design. In your floor plan, you want to create an interior design. The architectural design of your coffee shop plays an important role and it has the potential to either make or break your business. When designing the interior, you want to take into account ceilings, decorations, merchandising colors, lighting, power outlets for customers, furniture positioning, and other variables. The interior design of your coffee shop should be unique and match with the cultural setting of the area in which you plan to operate your coffee shop. One idea that you can include in your coffee shop is to have plants, for example. Plants bring a feeling of vitality and improve the state of mind. Studies have shown that the subliminal effect of plants has an effect that raises the spirits and brings happiness. An environment that includes plants also gives a positive outlook on life and encourage people to feel more alive and active. If you need help in creating an interior design or need a reference that you can use as a guideline, you can simply search for coffee shop interior design on pinterest.com or on Google search engine to find images. You can then use these images as a framework to create your interior design. Another idea is to explore the area in which you plan to start your coffee shop and have a good understanding of your prospective customer's interest. Lighting. In your floor plan, you want to include what kind of lightings you will use and how you will place them. You never want to overlook lighting. Good lighting can effectively add more value to your coffee shop and by using the right kind of lighting, it can incentivize customers to stay longer and spend more. You also want to be smart with your lightings. You want to make use of natural lighting to take advantage of organic light and conserve energy. Cool lights are also a great option during the day as they illuminate areas with similar tone to daylight. To create a soothing atmosphere in the evening, warm and soft tones are ideal because they create a softer contrast from darkness. However, depending on the brand of your coffee shop, you may always choose to use cool or warm tones. Furnishings. In your floor plan, you want to include what kind of furniture you want to have in your coffee shop. Getting your coffee shop furnished will improve your business revenue. It sets the tone and the environment for your shop and conveys the kind of business you want it to be for your customers. If you buy a conventional furniture or pick up secondhand chairs in a thrift shop, what's crucial is that you make your coffee shop a comfortable environment that customers want to keep coming back to. Also consider adding bookshelves as this can add character to your coffee shop and give you a place to display any mugs or other products you have for sale. Purchasing bookshelves can be as low as $40 and can be picked up at an office supply store. Coffee bar and kitchen. In your floor plan, you want to include a coffee bar and a kitchen. The coffee bar area is often the central focus of a coffee shop. This is where customers will go to to browse the menu, pick up drinks, and socialize with the employees. You want to make sure that this area is both appealing and well commercialized to increase sales. You'll also want to make sure that this area is workable for staff members to handcraft handmade drinks conveniently. Now, to create your own successful floor plan from scratch, you can either do it by hand or you can use an online design tool such as lucidcharts.com. By using Lucid Chart, you can create professional floor plans for your coffee shop. So let's look at some examples of a good floor plan that you can use as a reference. Now, as we can see here, we have a floor plan sample. As we look further, we can see that a desk can occupy one to four people at a time. Then over here, you can see the bookshelves for avid readers to pick up a novel to have a read break while enjoying their time at the cafe. 
You can also choose to include in your coffee shop a bookshop of popular novels that customers would be interested in buying. If you need help finding out what kind of books you should have for sale, you can simply look on Amazon online and check out the best sellers to get an idea of what customers would be interested in buying. Self-help books can be a great idea to include or nonfiction. Now over here, we can include a bar for your coffee shop. This is where your customers will place their orders and socialize with employees. This is where you want to make sure that the area is appealing and well commercialized to increase sales. And finally, over here is where you want to include a counter and kitchen for your cafe. This is where all your coffee supplies and inventories will be kept. And also, this is where your barista will spend most of their time brewing coffee and serving customers. Funding your business. After creating your floor plan, the next step you want to follow is to fund your coffee shop. Now, in order to fund your business, you want to be aware of all your options and the best way to get the money you need quickly. When it comes to starting your business, there are many other ways you can get capital, such as applying for grants and crowdfunding. But in this section, we're going to talk about the most impactful options that will make a real difference and make it worth your time to get immersed in and how to approach them successfully to get the money you need to jumpstart your coffee shop. In this section, you will learn how to build business credit to get capital to start and grow your coffee shop. You will learn everything with a step by step approach that you can use to fund your business. Building business credit to get capital. Now, let's start with how you can build your business credit to get capital for your coffee shop. Essentially, business credit follows the same process as personal credit. In general, the purpose of business credit is for other individuals, such as investors, companies, and financial organization, to find out whether your coffee shop is a good candidate to lend money or to engage in business with. The real major benefit of building your business credit is the ability to qualify for credit lines that are much larger than your personal credit. You can receive 10 to 100 times more than your personal credit when you start applying for business credit. You'll also get credit much faster than your personal credit. Get your EIN. In order to start building business credit for your coffee shop, you will first need to apply for an EIN, which stands for Employer Identification Number, and register your business name by first going to www.irs.gov businesses slash small dash businesses dash self dash employed slash apply dash for dash and dash employer dash identification dash number dash EIN dash online. Getting an EIN number is free. You should receive your EIN number once you have registered your business. Having an EIN number is the same as having a social security number. The purpose of the EIN is to be used for tax purposes. You will also be able to open a bank account, apply for a business license, and file your tax return by having an EIN. Get a business address. Now that you have your EIN, the next step you want to take is to have a business address. You want to have a real brick and mortar business address, and you want to avoid using your home address, PO box, and UPS address as this can prevent you from receiving business credit. When you apply for EIN, it's fine to use your home address because businesses and companies are always migrating or expanding from one location to another. But when you apply for business credits, the goal is to have the perception that you are an established company. They need to feel that you're not someone who's just starting out, which is a high risk as people who are starting out are most likely to default on their loans. So they're going to look for ways to rule you out from getting a loan and to find out that your address is a home address and not a business address is one of their metrics. They use a quick check application to determine if the address you have provided is a residential or business address. So now the question is, what happens if you don't have a business address? You may be in the process of doing your market research, writing your business plan and creating your floor plan. And most likely you won't have a location for a while. 
So I've organized this course in such a way that while you're doing your market research, writing your business plan and creating your floor plan, you should be building up your business credit at the same time as the process of getting a large credit line can take six to 12 months. By then you'd have collected everything you need and you'll be ready to launch your coffee shop successfully. Now, the beautiful thing is, even if you don't have a physical address, I'm going to show you a solution called virtual address. You could do here if you don't have a business address. There are three options that you can use. Option number one, address only virtual office. You can use this option to receive mail and packages as your dedicated business address. Option number two, virtual office. You can use this option to receive mail and packages, which also includes a dedicated phone line and fax number, receptionist service, and part-time use of fully furnished office and meeting rooms. Option number three, true office. You can use this option to receive mail and packages, and this option includes a full-time private office with receptionist service, dedicated phone line and fax number, internet, full furnishing, meeting rooms, and more. Either option will satisfy the requirement to get a business address, but let's say you're looking for the cheapest option. Then you want to get an address only virtual so that you can use your address when applying for business credit to fund your coffee shop. So when you apply for business credit, instead of using your home address, if you use an address only virtual office, when the lender looks at it, they'll see that you're in a high rise commercial building when in reality, you're just renting that address. That's how it works. List your business phone number with 411 directory. Now, the next step is to have a dedicated business phone number that is listed with the 411 directory assistance under the business name. This is another check that lenders will use to check the legitimacy of your coffee shop. Getting your business phone number listed in the 411 directories is free and easy. You can simply go to www.listyourself.net and get your number on the directory assistant page. Now, you want to understand why lenders do a lot of checks before they decide to give you a loan. Here's the reality. People want to give you the money. They want to give you a loan so that you can make the most productive use of it. And the lenders, in return, make their money back through interest. So, for example, if you borrow $100,000 from a lender at an interest rate of 2.5% for five years, you will pay a total of $12,500 in interest. $12,500 is how much the lender is going to make in five years. So with $100,000 from a single lender, that capital you will have access to will be able to start and grow your coffee shop successfully. Understand that people want to give you the money. That's why people are investing in stocks. That's why people are investing in bonds. And that's why people are investing in mutual funds. They're always looking for a place where they can put their money in and watch it grow, almost like growing a tree. But their problem is they don't want to lose their money in the process. They don't want to lose the money they've saved their entire life working for. They don't want to lose the money they've inherited. They don't want to lose the money they may have borrowed themselves. So the goal when trying to get a loan is to appear as credible and trustworthy as possible. They need to feel at ease. They need to feel that you have it under the control and that you and your business have been set up in such a way that if failure occurs, they will still be able to get their money back. When it comes to investing, success is never guaranteed. But when you're trying to get loans and borrow money from investors and lenders, you want them to feel like you've got a better chance of achieving financial success. So the steps I'm going to show you here in this course are guaranteed to get you in the right direction to build up your credibility so that you can qualify for loans to fund your coffee shop business. Get a 1-800 phone number and fax number. The next step is to get a 1-800 number for your coffee shop. Now you may be wondering, why do I need a 1-800 number if my coffee shop is going to serve customers in my local area? Well, think about it this way. Let's compare your coffee shop to Starbucks. Now, if you Google Starbucks in the search engine, you'll see that their customer service phone number is 1-800-782-7282. However, if you were looking for Starbucks near you, you would see a local number. You want to have two phone numbers. One number that will act as the headquarters of your coffee shop and the other will be the local number for your coffee shop. This is so that as your coffee shop company expands to different areas, they will each have a dedicated local business number. But having a 1-800 is very important when applying for business credit to receive money from lenders. Lenders perceive 1-800 numbers or toll-free numbers 
as a sign of business credibility. So even if you're just starting out and don't have an actual business location, just having a 1-800 number gives you the perception that you're an even bigger company and they'll take you more seriously and give you a larger loan that you'll need to start and grow your coffee shop. Now, the cost of getting yourself a 1-800 number is very affordable and easy. One website you can go to to get your 1-800 number is at www.unitelvoice.com for only $10 a month. $10 a month and bam, you now look more credible, more established, and lenders are more willing to give you the money you need to start and grow your coffee shop. This also includes a fax number for your virtual office online portal that you can use to send and receive documents, which adds more layer to your professionalism and credibility. Get a website and business email. The next step is to set up a website for your coffee shop. You want to have a website so that lenders can research your business. The more information they have about your business, the more willing they are to give you a loan. This shows that your coffee shop is established and they get to learn everything directly from your website. The cost of creating a website is relatively low and you don't even need to hire a web developer to build your website. If you are creating a website for the first time or if you don't know how to code and are looking for the fastest and easiest way to create your website, I would highly recommend using www.wix.com. Wix is very easy to use and will help you create a web presence for your coffee shop by using online drag and drop tools. The cheapest plan that can get you started and make your coffee shop website look presentable is a combo plan that's priced at $13 a month. But I would highly recommend getting an entrepreneur and freelancer plan for $17 a month as this includes a $300 ad voucher that you can use to advertise your coffee shop with Google and Bing. This plan also includes a free domain name and other cool features with 24 seven customer care. So if you had any difficulties creating your website, they will be more than happy to assist you. To get yourself a business email address, you can use G Suite by Google. Also on Wix, they've partnered with Google G Suite. So you should be able to get a combo deal where you can also include a business email address along with your website. You want to avoid using free services such as Google, Yahoo, and Hotmail. Nothing is worse than a lender seeing an application sexysally2008 at yahoo.com as an email address. This is usually the sign they're looking to tell if it's an established business or if it's too risky. An established business, when you see an email, is usually, for example, inbox at groundupcafe.com. When you create your business address, you want it to be your name at yourcompany.com. It's important to have a business email for your coffee shop as it adds another layer of professionalism and credibility and helps you get the money to start and grow your coffee shop business. Get a business bank account. The next step is to open a bank account for your coffee shop. The business banking history of your coffee shop is important for the future success of being able to secure larger business loans. It is important to have a business bank account as lenders will look at the start date of your bank account as to when your company started and your financial statements to see the financial activities that are happening. Get Dunn and Bradstreet number. The next step is to get a Dunn and Bradstreet number, also known as Dunn's number. Now, what's a Dunn's number? The Dunn's number you will receive is Dunn and Bradstreet code to identify your business and anyone around the world will be able to view your business information, credit files, scores, and ratings to evaluate different financial health indicators. Think of a DUNS number as an EIN to the world. Having a DUNS number will help your business to borrow money from creditors without having a personal guarantor. Visit www.dnb.com to get your DUNS number today. Start building credit fast by obtaining vendor credit. Now, to build your business credit quickly so that you can start borrowing capital to start growing your coffee shop fast is through obtaining vendor credit. Now, what is vendor credit and how can you use it to help your business grow? Vendor credits are equivalent to the money you pay in advance to your vendors. For example, it's like having an Amazon card that can only be used to shop on Amazon. Now, the reason why you want to get vendor credit is because they're generally easier to get in order to start building your credit profile quickly for your coffee shop business. Just by having an EIN and having your coffee shop listed in 411 directory assistance, you can get approved for vendor credit. 
you want to get vendor credits that report to the business credit agency to help you build your initial business credit. Now, when it comes to vendor accounts, these are accounts that have to be paid back in over 15, 30, 60, or 90 days term. These are referred to as net 15, 30, 60, or 90 days term. So what this means is that you can purchase items from the vendor and you have to pay back in full in over 30, 60, or 90 days. This is completely different from your personal credit. So for example, for your personal credit, let's say you have a credit limit of $500 and you have a charge of 250. Because your personal credit is a revolving account, you can pay 30 to $50 a month until you pay 250 in full. But when it comes to business credit, if you have a $500 credit limit and you have a $250 worth of charges, you'd have to pay it back in full by either 15, 30, 60, or 90 days. So that's essentially what a net 30 account is. It means you've got 30 days to pay off the full balance. Here we're going to show you the vendors that you can use to help build your initial report. And once you start building your business credit, you will then have a profile, you will then have a score, and over time you will be able to go to a financial institution and easily qualify for a large sum of money to fund your coffee shop business. When applying for vendor credit, always use your EIN and never use your SSN. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose of building business credit. And when choosing vendor credit, you want to make sure that they do report back to the business credit agency because there are a lot of companies that don't report to the business credit agency. So here are some vendors that you can use to start building your credit now. www.quill.com www.granger.com www.uline.com www.crownofficeapplies.com www.gimplers.com These are the links here for you to start applying for vendor credit today. Now, of course, these are not the companies that you would normally shop at, but the goal is to join the companies that will give you a start in building up your business credit by offering vendor credit. So every now and then you want to shop and spend about $10 or less on each vendor. You don't have to spend a lot. And here's a tip. You can just buy items you know you're going to need in the future anyways, such as computer papers, spreadsheets, pencils, and so on, so that you're not essentially wasting your money as the items you're buying will be put to use. Every month or so, you want to buy something and then pay back in full each month to give them the incentive to report to the business agency. Also, feel free to do some research on companies that offer vendor credit and that reports to the business credit agency. Now, after you establish five trading lines using vendor credit, at about three to six months, you want to start applying for store cards from well-known establishments such as Target, Apple, Amazon, Walmart, Shell gas stations, and more. Now, you don't have to spend any money once you've got your store cards and your credit profile will continue to build every month. But every three to six months, you want to use each card at least once so that the card is not deactivated due to inactivity. Now, after you establish about five store cards, you can start applying for business credits from Visa cards, MasterCards, American Express cards, and Discover type credit cards. The business credits that you will get from card issuers will be revolving accounts, which means that if you get a $10,000 credit limit and you have a $5,000 charge, you can pay $30 to $50 until you pay the full $5,000. So the total building time to get a Visa slash American Express type card from no credit profile can take about six to 12 months. By that time, you should have finished your market research. You should have your business plan ready. You should have your floor plan ready. And now you should have the capital you need to start and grow your coffee shop business. Now, another thing you need to note is that if you want to have the highest credit limit for Visa and MasterCard type of credits, you want to have the highest store credit limit on your profile. So let's say, for example, that Apple or Dell is giving you a $10,000 credit limit. When you get a Visa slash MasterCard type of credit, they'll look at your credit profile and see the maximum limit that Apple or Dell gives you, and they'll match your maximum limit. So if you get a $10,000 limit from Apple or Dell, then Visa is going to give you $10,000. Then when you apply for a MasterCard, they will give you $11,000. Then when you apply for American Express, American Express is going to give you $9,000.
Then when you apply for Discover, Discover is going to give you $12,000. And when you add it all together, you've got $42,000 of business credit that you can withdraw as cash in a total of six to 12 months. Also, as you build up your credit, every six months, always call and ask for a credit increase from all of your trade vendor accounts, store cards, and Visa MasterCard type of credit. This will also build up your credit quickly, and by doing so, you will increase the amount of money you have access to. If we combine vendor credit, store credit, and Visa slash MasterCard type of credits, you can easily access about a quarter million to fund and grow your coffee shop business. Finding commercial space for your business. The next step you want to follow after you have financed your business is to find a commercial space to house your coffee shop. There is a lot of ways you can go about finding a commercial space to house your coffee shop. However, in this course, we're going to talk about the most effective ways to find a commercial space for your business. Here are the four ways for you as a coffee entrepreneur to find commercial rental space. Option one. Drive around the location of your market. Option two, search online for a commercial property to rent. Option three, network with local business owners. Option four, hire a commercial real estate broker. Let's talk about driving around the location of your market first. Now, the reason why this is the first good step is that you will raise your odds of finding a property at the lowest cost that will allow you to sustain your business. Or you might discover a vacant property that would be ideal for your coffee shop and would become highly profitable. You want to be able to get the feel of the area. The main objective when you start a coffee shop business or any business in particular is to improve your probability for success. And one of the variables that you can modify is finding a property with low rent or finding a property that has a lot of traffic or potential. By driving around your market to find a vacant property, you may discover parts of the area you've never seen before or find a hidden gem of a business. When picking a commercial property to house your coffee shop, you never want to just have one option. You always want to have more options to place your coffee shop business. This will give you more bargaining leverage as you are not depending on one property to start your business and you will feel more confident and optimistic. You want to pay attention to buildings that have boarded up windows or appear to have no cars parked in the lot at peak times. You will also see for lease signs in the windows, often with a phone number to call. You want to write down the phone number and location of the property and give them a call for more information. At best, you want to have three to five building properties that you can see your coffee shop succeeding in. When negotiating with the owner of the property, you want to strive for the best lease term. When you search for property, you will either find a broker who knows the area very well, or you may find a good landlord with a property asking for a reasonable rent. The next option you can use is to search online for commercial properties to rent. You can do this in combination with driving around the location of your market. You might want to see what's on the market, or you might want to get a feel for rent prices. To find commercial properties in your area, you want to go to sites such as LoopNet, Crexy, and Craigslist to understand what property prices are going to be like in your area so that you have some information. From there, you can also contact the property owners and negotiate good lease terms. You want to build a relationship with them and explain your plan and your business to them. Property owners are looking for entrepreneurs like yourself to rent their buildings as they would be able to make more profit from you by renting their property as a commercial property than by renting it as a residential property. Now, when using online sites, you want to search by product type, square footage, and find other things that sets the property apart from others, such as amenities and other features. You want to create a list of all properties in which you can see your coffee shop thriving. Take notes on the square footage, the rental costs, and collect their phone number or email so that you can make arrangements to see the property in person and negotiate the lease terms. You also want to take into consideration that as you reach out to listing agents and property owners, they're not on your side and they're looking to negotiate the best deals for themselves. So you might want to be armed with a lawyer who can help you know if the deal is good or bad. 
networking with local business owners can be very useful and give you a competitive edge. Usually they know what's available or will soon be available in the area. Entrepreneurs and small business owners are like families, especially in certain areas, and you want to be part of the family. You can learn a lot from them as they are most likely willing to inform you about what's going on in the area and they may have insights into the commercial space that's coming soon. The good thing about networking with local business owners is that they have experience of being a tenant with different property owners in the area and can give you a quick thumbs up or thumbs down on that relationship. The relationship you have with your property owner is essential to the success of your coffee shop. Having a good or a bad landlord can make a difference between success and struggle as a new coffee shop owner. You can join your local chamber of commerce or network with business owners and property owners on LinkedIn or even entrepreneurs and business owners on Facebook groups. When you join these groups, you want to let everyone know that you're looking for a commercial space. By actively networking, you will soon come across someone who will know which route you should take to get your coffee shop off the ground. Hiring a commercial real estate broker can be your best bet. Commercial real estate brokerage are devoted entirely to the leasing and sale of commercial property, such as office, retail, and industrial real estate. They can also be your expert advisor throughout the leasing process and are the best resource for what is available and may be available in your market. Commercial real estate brokers can help you negotiate rental rates, build out allowances, and rent abatement periods on your lease so that you know you're getting the best deal possible. Hiring a commercial real estate broker is free. Yes, free of charge. The cost is usually carried by the owner of the property. They earn money through commissions, so there's no incentive to steer you in the wrong direction because whatever property or property owner you choose, they're going to earn a commission. So their goal is to find the best deal possible for you and to negotiate with property owners so that you are likely to purchase the lease. Selecting and registering the right business structure. Now let's talk about selecting the right business structure for your coffee shop. When it comes to choosing the right business structure, the goal is to choose a business structure that offers you the right balance of legal protection and benefits. There's always an opportunity for something to go wrong while running your business. And if it does, you want to protect yourself from losing more than you need to. If you were to get sued, you want to protect your assets outside of your coffee shop. You want to protect all the valuable things that you own and all it takes is one lawsuit to lose everything that you have created. And you also want to choose the right structure that offers you the best financial benefits, such as the ability to pay less in taxes and the ability to raise money for your company. The best business structure for your coffee shop is to have an LLC, but let's talk about the other business structure so that you can understand the benefits and the disadvantages. Here we will talk about the five most common business structures and the advantages and disadvantages that each one has. One, sole proprietorship. Two, partnership. Three, corporation. Four, LLC. Sole proprietorship. Getting a sole proprietorship is easy and requires less paperwork. It's cheap and affordable, and the sole proprietor is taxed using individual income tax rates rather than corporate, making it much easier to comply with your tax obligations. You will have full ownership and direct control of overall decision making and will have the freedom to drive the business in the direction you desire. The disadvantage is that you are fully liable. If you have been sued or if you are unable to pay your debts, your house, savings, and other individual assets can be taken to satisfy those debts. The biggest drawback is that it's going to be very difficult to raise money for your coffee shop. The problem is that by structuring your business as a sole proprietor, you will not be able to issue stocks or other investment incomes. Investors and banks will give you the money you need if you're in a position to share a percentage of your company. If you ever watch a show called Shark Tank, it's similar in that respect. And those funds you can get from investors or banks can be the difference between growth or decay of your coffee shop business. You want to avoid sole proprietorship as you want your coffee shop to be able to get the funds to become the next Starbucks. Partnership. Forming a partnership is also easy and requires less paperwork. 
Partnerships are usually the ideal choice when they involve multiple owners, professional groups, i.e. lawyers, doctors, or app developers, and groups of individuals who want to test their business ideas before forming a more formal business. So let's say, for example, that you are a doctor and that you have the idea of creating a medical breakthrough by creating smart inhalers for patients, as you have discovered that many patients tend to neglect or not use their inhalers properly. To make your idea work, you realize that you're going to need to develop a very sophisticated app. However, you are not tech savvy and you will need the help of an app developer who can shed light on your ideas for this smart inhaler invention. You've decided to propose your idea to the app developer and he's willing to take the entrepreneur journey and would like to develop the app. This is when forming a partnership makes sense because both parties play a key role in the success of the smart inhaler. You, as a doctor, know how the inhaler is supposed to work, but don't have the skills to develop the app. And the app developer has no medical skills, but has the ability to develop the app. Thus, by forming a partnership, both parties will highlight the role they play and will most likely make the partnership a 50-50 split. They will also be more invested in making it become a success. The only major disadvantage is that there is a risk of disagreement and friction between the two partners. The inability to resolve disagreements can lead to even the most promising business or idea to failure. Corporation Corporation provides owners with the best defense against personal liability, but the cost of forming a corporation is much higher than the other business structure. Once a corporation is formed, it will essentially have a life of its own, with its own rights, functionality, obligations, and liabilities. This means a corporation can't sue or be sued on its own behalf. It can purchase, own, and use its own real or personal property, make its own contracts and guarantees, lend money, and invest funds. The main advantage of forming a corporation is that it is more attractive to investors. One benefit of having a corporation, specifically a C-Corps over an LLC, is that it is easier to attract investors by providing capital acquisitions through equity financing. Investors are more interested in owning shares than in owning LLC membership interests. As your coffee shop begins to expand, you can also convert your LLC to C-Corps so that you can raise money from hundreds and thousands of investors through the sale of stocks. The disadvantage of forming a corporation is that it must pay income tax on its profits. Any profits distributed to the owner as dividends are taxed again as the owner's personal income. This means that corporate profits are subject to double taxation. LLC Forming an LLC is the best way to take as having one will provide a great deal of protection for your assets and because the IRS considers LLC to be either a partnership or a sole proprietorship, you will not pay LLC taxes or corporate taxes, which means more money in your pocket. Getting an LLC is easy and it doesn't require a lot of paperwork. In order to form an LLC, you will need to follow the following three steps. Step number one, select your state in which you will form your LLC. Step number two, create your coffee shop name and include the abbreviation LLC next to it. For example, Ground Up Cafe LLC. Step number three, file your LLC with the state. After filing, you should receive a document called Articles of Organization, Certificate of Formation, or Certificate of Organization, depending on your state. This document grants you the permission to do business in your state legally. Creating a business name for your coffee shop. Now, this is where a lot of coffee shop owners spend most of their time trying to come up with the best name. As a regular coffee buyer, I can tell you from experience that the name of your coffee shop doesn't matter too much as long as I can tell that your business is actually a coffee shop when I type coffee shop near me on Google's Maps. As a customer, the most important thing is how the interior looks inside and the quality of the coffee and how friendly the staff is. So just having your coffee shop called Ground Up Cafe or Jones Espresso is good enough. Unless you have a marketing strategy that will appeal to a certain demographic of consumers by having a catchy name, it's best to keep it simple. The real purpose of having a name is for consumers to identify and remember the quality of each business. So let's say that the name of your coffee shop is Jones Espresso. Sounds boring and simple, right? Now let's say that the name of your competitor is Beans and Creams Cafe. Sounds very interesting, right? It can spark a lot of interest and makes you want to go there, 
But when you go there, the interior design is out of date with cheap materials. The quality of the coffee is average and the staff is not exceptional. I myself would not want to go there or hold business meetings there or read a book there or bring a friend there, even though they have a very clever and catchy name. You always want to focus on the presentation of your coffee shop while creating a name to let your customers know Jones Espresso is the place to be. When creating your coffee shop name, you can even consider using your location as this can play a major role in the success of your coffee shop. Here's another tip. If you type in free business name generator on Google search, you can use an online business name generator tool to help you create names for your coffee shop business. Getting an EIN for your business. Now let's begin by getting an EIN for your business. To apply for an EIN for your coffee shop, you want to visit sa.www4.irs.gov slash mo d i e i n slash individual slash index dot j s p from there you will click on begin application and follow the steps and directions as provided on the website obtaining your license and permits now that you've registered your llc with the state that you're going to run your coffee shop and have your ein it's important to get your license and permits to operate your coffee shop First, you want to get in touch with your city slash state slash county for permit regulations so that you can know what's needed to run your coffee shop without any issues. You will most likely need a seller's permit, which allows the state to record and collect taxes on the sales of goods from your business. You're also going to need a health permit for your coffee shop. The purpose of health permits is to protect the general public from restaurants engaged in unsafe food handling and storage procedures. The health department regularly inspects the coffee shop and has the authority to issue a fine or revoke a health permit if the cafe possesses a risk to public safety. Once you have your seller's permit and your health permit, you are ready to start your coffee shop legally. Opening a business bank account. The next step is to open a business bank account for your coffee shop. Now let's talk about the benefits of having a business account for your business. Organization. By setting a business checking account, your personal and business transactions are separated. All your business transactions are tracked in a separate statement. This will help you find out your profit margins and can help you develop strategies to increase your profit margins. If you mix both personal and business, it's going to be a lot harder and time consuming to figure out how profitable your coffee shop is. Easier to calculate taxes and deductions. A business checking account also helps you to file taxes correctly. Accurately filing taxes becomes much more challenging when you have both your personal and business expenses on the same account. If you are not filing taxes correctly, you may face IRS penalties. You want an easy time when it comes to deducting business expenses so that you can pay less in taxes. Ability to accept payments by credit card. If you only accept cash payments, you will essentially limit the potential amount of customers as many of your prospective customers who come to your coffee shop will pay with a credit card instead of cash. By having a business bank account, you will be able to set up a credit acceptance system through a bank with your business checking account or through a merchant account such as PayPal. Multiple signers on a business account. By having a business account, you can authorize another person to use your business account. This can be very beneficial as while you're running your coffee shop, you can have an employee who you can trust to perform some administrative banking duties. This, in turn, will free up your time and allow you to focus more on the revenue generating aspects of your coffee business. Establishing credibility and qualifying for bank loans. By having a business bank account, this will give you more credibility and make you more likely to receive financing. Opening a business bank account can also help you establish a relationship with your bank. 
A good relationship with your banking professionals can help your business grow. For instance, if you need financing, you might want a business loan. A strong relationship with your bank representative can help you get better terms for your loan. Now, let's learn how to open a bank account for your business. Opening a business account is an easy and simple process, and it is very similar to opening your personal account. The three steps leading to a successful opening of a business bank account are Step 1. Choose a bank. You want to choose a bank that meets your business needs. So this means you want to look for benefits and identify what you're looking for in a business account that will increase your chances of success through your coffee shop. For example, a bank that provides a credit line. Step two, prepare your documents. To open your bank account, you will need your EIN and your articles of organization. Step three, open your business account online or in person. Either opening your business online or in person is fine. If you open a business bank online, they will verify your information and once the account is open, you will need to transfer money to meet the minimum daily balance in order to waive the monthly fee. For example, TD Bank has a business convenient check in plus account where you will need a minimum daily balance of $1,500 to waive the monthly fee. If your balance was to be $1,400, for example, you would have to pay a monthly maintenance fee of $25. Coffee shop equipment list. Now let's talk about all the equipments you will need in order to successfully run your coffee shop. Here are the eight essential equipments you need to grow your coffee shop from the ground up. One, drip coffee makers. Two, commercial espresso machine. Three, commercial coffee grinders. Four, commercial freezer and refrigerators. Five, toasters, ovens, and cooking appliances. 6. Water filtration system. 7. Security system. 8. POS system. First, you will need drip coffee makers. Generally, about 30% of all coffee shop purchases are generated from plain drip coffee. When shopping around for drip coffee makers, you want to buy those that are long lasting and can produce a high amount of coffee per day fast enough to keep up with the demands at the busiest times for customers, which is usually in the morning and big enough to make large batches of coffee so that you're not always brewing coffee all day. The second thing you'll need is a commercial espresso machine. The goal here is when shopping for a commercial espresso machine, you want to get the one that produces the most value while spending the least amount. The quality of your espresso machine has an impact on the quality of your espresso. The third thing you'll need is a commercial coffee grinder. It is important to invest in the right coffee grinder that gives the best flavor and aroma. It's also a good idea to have more than one grinder as you'll need one for espressos, one for filtering coffee, and one for serving decaf or flavored coffee. By keeping each coffee separated, you will preserve the flavors of each of them. The fourth thing you'll need is a commercial freezer and refrigerators. In order to hold your milk, cold brew, and other drinks you want to serve, you need to invest in a refrigerator. When shopping around, you want to get the right freezers and refrigerators to hold all of your food supplies. You want your refrigerators and freezers to be visually appealing, but at the same time streamlined enough for your staff to quickly make customers drink. The fifth thing you'll need is toasters, ovens, and cooking appliances. When shopping around for coffee shop equipment, you might want to consider having a small selection of hot food for your customers to maximize your sales. Consider getting yourself a conveyor toaster and other cooking appliances that you need to serve hot food to your customers. The sixth thing you'll need is water filtration system. By having a water filtration system, this will improve the quality of your coffee drinks. You never want a cheap filtration system. The goal here is to have quality equipments that will make the best quality coffee for your customers so that they can keep coming back for more. This is when charging a high price for your premium coffee, you will begin to recoup your money spent on quality equipments. The seventh thing you'll need is a security system. As the business owner of your coffee shop, it is also important to have a security system in place. Just having a security camera in place will reduce the likelihood of theft and crime from occurring. You also want security cameras to watch the interaction of employees with customers and to have a full video of any incident that may occur so that you can win lawsuits in court. 
When choosing a security system, make sure you get the one that offers the best security for the best price. The eighth thing you'll need to get is a POS system. Now, this is when having a business bank account would be effective, as discussed in the previous section called opening a business bank account. Having a POS, which stands for point of sale system, is essential to the success of your coffee shop. Square is one of the most popular POS systems. This makes transaction and the collection of payments more efficient and easier to use. The POS system can also be used for employees to clock in and out. It can be used for inventory management so that you can track how many products you have left so that you can restock. And it also has reporting features that allows you to keep a close eyes on sales, profits and expenses such as the cost of goods sold. This will help you make data-driven business decisions. Congratulations, you finished the Coffee Shop 101 course at the Cafe Academy, helping people grow their coffee shop from scratch. You now have all the information and knowledge you need to start growing your coffee shop from the ground up. As you start your coffee shop, be sure to use this course as a reference and framework when starting your business. If you believe that you have overlooked any important information, please take this opportunity to rewind and revisit the parts that you've missed. And if you need help growing your coffee shop business, please send us an email to inbox at thecafeacademy.com. We are here for you, and we want you to succeed.